my first love, I think, was science. You know, I admire archaeologists because they dig under the surface and find things. And I like to look through things and see what is really there and to see the truth. Well, my parents loved to go to restaurants and we went to Lund Lundy's, the famous seafood restaurant, in its earliest days. And I remember being there when I had to sit on telephone books. And Sundays meant big shore dinners with lobsters and steamers and chowder and huckleberry pie. And I just loved restaurants and I've never stopped loving restaurants. I got a job as a home furnishings copywriter at Good Housekeeping. And then at 17, the food editor left. And the editor said, I know you love food and it isn't such a big deal on 17. Would you like to do food as well as home furnishings? And in 1960, Joe Baum, who I knew from having been at Kew, uh, asked me to, would I help with the research on the Four Seasons? Yeah. We would have, I think it was a month before it opened, met every day at one o'clock in the banquet area of the Hotel Lexington, where they were already operating the Hawaiian Room. And the chef, Albert Stockley, Cumin, the man who was going to be the maitre d', we did 35 dishes a day, and we would all taste them and vote on them. My part was even before that because I researched many things, uh, not only recipes and dishes, but seasonal expressions in all parts of the world. And then we all got together on menu writing. What should we call it on the menu? So um, for me, it was an absolute ball. I mean, nobody had as much fun or learned as much as I did. I hate to write, hate it. Do anything other than write. I'm always late with copy. I think what changed me most of all was when I stopped thinking of it as writing and I thought of it as saying something. A newspaper was a perfect place for me and I never knew that. I worked on magazines always until I went to the Times. But the, the shorter the deadline, the sooner I'll write it. So <laughs> um, in the beginning, first I would say the first two or three years at the Times, I was rarely recognized. One of the most embarrassing things is to walk in with a wig and glasses and have one say, good evening, Miss Sheraton. <laughs> and that began to happen after a while. If I thought I might be recognized, I would have the other couple we were eating with that night, and we were usually four people, arrive first and see if they got the table that was ordered and how they were treated. And that was very telling. My legacy is telling the truth. Telling the truth. <laughs>